and that cockle soup looked perfect for a cold Saturday lunch. Octopus is something you can also try if you can get hold of it, but if you can't find it, there are other great seafoods I associate with Spain and Greece. And it's this stuff, it's squid. And uh, I thought, obviously, you're doing some, another one of Spanish's great exports, which is chorizo, which is wonderful. This is chorizo picante, and it's the soft one. Uh, you can get the firmer ones as well, which you can just eat raw. These are the cooking ones, the softer ones. And we're going to mix the two together in a, in actually an Italian dish, in a risotto. So we're going to, it cooks like a paella, but um, it's done like a risotto. So first off, we're going to take some onion, some garlic, start sweating that off, and then pop in our chorizo into there. Now, acting, when I was reading about you, mm -hmm. you kind of fell into it and you, you want to thank your English teacher uh, for it. Don't you? I didn't fall, I was pushed into it more, really. Pushed we were, into um, it. It was uh, Trevor Drury, my English teacher. Uh, in, in, in Doncaster, uh, and we were there was a lot of mucking about in an English class one day, and he said, "Whoever shouts out next is going to is going to have a terrible punishment." And that was it was me. Uh, and he said, "Right, you've got to you've got to read something out at the school carol concert in front of the whole school." And I said, "Oh, you can't do that. That's a, that's a, that's not a proper punishment, you know." But he made me do this thing, and I and I, I read out a piece of Dylan Thomas, uh, "A Child's Christmas in Wales," that was fantastic. And I um, and I remember I sort of got up in the in the pulpit thing in the big church in front of the whole school, and and I I think something in me just sort of went, "Oh, this is great, isn't it?" I did, it was power. It was power mad, I think. <laughs> and I um, and I did this, and I and I. I enjoyed it. So I did that, and then he said to me, oh, that wasn't much of a punishment, was it? You, you liked that? <laughs> you liked that, that, really? And I said, uh, I said, I did, Raleigh, yeah. So I thought I'd kind of won that round, and that was the end of it. He said, oh, well, I need somebody to be in the school play. So now you've got to be in the school play. And I said, oh, you can't do that. I can't wear makeup and tights and things like that. It's, I, it's, I, I, was, I was 14 or something. I thought, I can't do that. Um, so he made me do that, made me do another school play. And then, uh, and then he sent me off to a group called uh, the South Yorkshire Theatre for Youth. Right. Uh, which was then, I think, in Rotherham, which was, um, which was very glamorous, as you can imagine, that first uh, attracted me to... Did your parents have the same sort of view of acting as sort of my... Certainly my grandparents had of me doing cooking. It wasn't the done thing, was that? Uh, no, I don't think they did. I think they were... Well, I didn't really sort of take up the proper acting for many years after that, really. That was where it started. But, uh, no, my mum had trained as a, as a singer, as an opera singer, and my mum and dad used to have a, uh, an act that they did in the, in the northern clubs. Right. So there was that sort of uh, showing off strain, Is this I in suppose. Doncaster, or as it was one in... of the researchers told, told me this morning, you're from Doncaster? Doncaster, it's <laughs> yeah. gone up, you see, in the <laughs> She's world. She's a Chelsea girl, you know then. what I mean? Oh, I see, you're <laughs> in <laughs> Doncaster. <laughs> um, this was all in, yeah, this was all in Doncaster. And... Um, Yes, yeah, so I suppose that uh, to an extent it was in the in the genes or in the blood or something. So I don't. I suppose they weren't as uh, you, you, horrified by my interest as some parents might have been. I'll just run through. Well, I've got a shallot, garlic in there. We've got the chorizo in there. The rice has gone in. I always put white wine in my risottos. I don't know what these guys, but I, I like the white wine in there. Good um, and obviously we've got some uh, chicken stock in there as well. We just basically cook this, gradually add in the stock, cook this for sort of about 12 to 14 minutes, and you end up with what we've got here, which is um, basically this risotto mixture. You can also uh, alter this by adding a little bit more stock. And at this mo moment in time, I'm going to add my um, cauliflower in there as well, which we're going to thinly slice our cauliflower. Now, all these sort of, looking back at your career as well, you've done everything from sort of London's Burning, Casualty. Yes. It was in Bridget Jones' Diaries. I was in the, uh, I was in the second driver. one, yeah, yeah, Bridget Jones' Edge of Reason, yeah, yeah. But all, do I say, all small bits, people would see your face, but is it because you've done all these little bits and pieces that makes you, you know, learn the trade a little bit more, because you do a variety uh, of sort of stuff? I suppose I had done a variety of things, I mean, also doing, uh, I mean, there was a series years ago, Common as Muck, on the BBC, that was... Uh, Less, uh, I was pretty, you know, big bit of that and, and other things. But yeah, you do all sorts of different things, and you know, somebody somebody gives you a, a, a large opportunity, and you you take that. And um, if there isn't with Bridget Jones, I remember they'd been filming the second Bridget Jones film, huge film, for about a year, and they they rang me up on the Monday, I think, and said, "Will you come and do this part? We've just written it for the end of the film." to start on the Wednesday and do this thing driving around with Rennie Zellweger around yeah. London in a taxi. And I kind of couldn't believe that they'd spent so much money on this film and done so much of it. And, uh, and with two days' notice, they thought, we need a scene at the end where she's in a taxi. Ring somebody up and get a taxi driver. Right. So they'd written this. See, it was all sort of a bit kind of... 
uh, you last know, last minute. minute. Very different well, to doing what you're doing now, of course. Yes, mid summer. The beautifully well prepared and organised mid summer. So you've emergence. taken over from from John Nettles. Yeah. Yeah. Who is retired? I thought, to be honest, no. he would get killed well, he's off. retired. He's retired from mid. No, I think they thought it'd be a bit sort of overly dramatic to. Overly to dramatic. Kill him. I've read. <laughs> I've read <laughs> this is the stats of midsummer murders: yeah. two hundred and forty-six murders, yeah. twelve accidental deaths, yeah. eleven suicides, yeah. eight deaths by natural causes, and yeah. one geezer died in a vat of soup. Soup. Yeah. Now that's in a village. My village has got 30 it's people. It's not in, in a it. village. It's not a village. Right, what is it? It's a, a county. county. Oh, it's a county. It's the whole of a county. It's a right. huge area. Right. Know, There's thousands of people haven't been killed or poisoned or drowned in soup. There's lots of others there. There's still lots of people to go through. Because this is your, what, the second, well. This is my second series. It's your the second 15th. series. It's the 15th. We've just started shooting the uh, 15th series of the show. Uh, I took over at the beginning of series 14, which is going out now. Uh, I believe there's another episode on, on ITV at 8 o'clock on Wednesday. How, um, do you, how do you do that? So it's taking over, do you, do you try and put it in your own? Or? Well, it's not take, I wasn't taking over the same character. I was taking, they, they changed the character. John Nettle's character was retiring from the force and leaving. And uh, it just so happened that his cousin was also a detective chief inspector with right. another police force who then came to, um, who moved to Midsummer to take over. But I mean,